Hello all and welcome back to another episode of Retro Tech Bytes and welcome to GPU June. So first of all to all of you, uh, happy June and you know, happy to be here and I hope you all have a wonderful month of June. So yeah, let's get this show on the road and talk about some graphics cards. Alright, so you've seen one of these two cards before, specifically this one. This is the rendition Verity V2100 or 2200 depending on what you want to call it. It's the card I've talked about for my rendition video, I'll link it above, but basically the gist of it is, this card is not what I'm talking about today. It's here as a demonstrator, so just bear that in mind. This is what I'm going to talk about today. This is an Intel 740. This is Intel's latest, greatest, and, well, most capable GPU. Okay, it's none of those things, but it is Intel's last discrete graphics card. And yeah, with all the hype about Intel making a new graphics card, I figured why not start with, well, the Intel card. Let's speculate a little maybe about what the new Intel card will be like. Will it be a trailblazer like this card, or, you know, will it shake up the market in other ways? So, why the two graphics cards right here, right now, when I'm only talking about this one? Well, take a look at the connector. This is called an AGP connector. This, by contrast, is a PCI connector. So, what's the difference? In 1997, Intel developed AGP, also known as Accelerated Graphics Port, as a successor to the older PCI connector for graphics. Most graphics cards were, you know, getting close to saturating the PCI bus, which was slow and ran at 33 megahertz and only had a shared bus bandwidth of 133 megabytes a second. By contrast, AGP at two times speed, which is what this card could do, ran at 66 megahertz, but could provide 533 megabytes of throughput. So one of the big things that that 533 megabytes of throughput enabled on these cards was new features like AGP texturing. What's AGP texturing? Well, in the case of the Intel 740, right here you have four two megabyte RAM chips. That eight megabytes of RAM is not apportioned into four megabytes of a frame buffer and four megabytes of actual texture memory. No, 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 no. Intel thought of something interesting when designing the AGP spec in 1997, and when designing the 740 thereafter. In designing the 740, Intel actually created a system whereby the texture memory was the system's main memory. So the system's main memory at this time was PC66, you know, 66 megahertz SD RAM, and the idea was to leverage that 66 megahertz SD RAM with the Intel 740 and store all the textures there and retrieve them and use this as the frame buffer. Now that was supposed to allow for a substantial boost in performance, but eh, didn't really do so much. The big thing it did do though was usher in a new age. And by a new age, I mean cards that were like this, that were, you know, not only cool looking, but AGP with AGP features. By contrast, let's talk about the rendition for a second. There actually is an AGP variant of the rendition cards. There were some really early AGP cards like the uh, Voodoo 3, for example. But like the Voodoo 3, the rendition, unlike the Intel 740, did not use any AGP features. It simply used AGP as a 66 megahertz dedicated bus, which, yes, does improve performance, although not to the quite the level that you know, using and leveraging AGP features otherwise would. So you're probably thinking, Will, why are you talking about the boring Intel 740 when you got other cool things to talk about, like the 3DFX Voodoo Banshee right here, which was, you know, an awesome card in its own right. And as a contemporary of the 740, uh, yeah, outperformed it by every metric. And it also used AGP. Well, again, it didn't really use AGP features, and it wasn't in the sense that the 740 was a, you know, new and revolutionary card. It's simply more like the rendition took an older idea and simply put it on a dedicated bus and said, okay, let's amp up the speed, make a cool 2D, 3D card, and yeah, do 3D effects stuff with it. Yeah, no, Intel went their own route, and with the 740, Intel standardized the adoption of the AGP bus, thus kicking off the next, eh, let's say 10 or so years of hardware. And it's with that measure that, you know, I want to talk about the 740. It's an AGP card, sure, but unlike the newer cards, which are now PCI Express, and unlike the older cards, which are PCI, it fits right in the middle, right in the time frame that I think GPU June's trying to capture. So let's talk about it, see why it's important, what's cool about it, 
and run some fun tests on it, play some games. Fact of the matter remains that the Intel 740 was, well, not exactly what was promised, but it was something that was delivered. And we'll get to that. But when it was first announced, the card itself drew a lot of fanfare. I mean, a number of reviewers were of the opinion that it was going to be Intel's mainstream offering into the market, that it was going to threaten established players in the game like ATI, NVIDIA, 3D FX, 3D Labs, Matrox. And well, competitors rightly feared that the 2D and 3D quality of the Intel 740 would be somewhat formidable. However, as is today, there were skeptics, and many of the skeptics claimed, and well, it turned out they were right, that the Intel 740 was a graphics board, you know, derived from the Intel marketing machine, and no more. To an extent, this was, well, true and untrue. It was true in the sense that the Intel 740 was underperforming and overpromising. But it was also untrue in the sense that the Intel 740 was developed upon a series of serious improvements and really did standardize the AGP bus. That's what it was intended to do, and that's precisely what it did. In that sense, mission success. Intel proved the skeptics wrong with its 2D performance. For purposes of 2D acceleration, it was up there with the best of the best. And you can see here in this excerpt from PC Magazine from 1998 that the card really did shine. I mean, it was up there with the Riva TNT from NVIDIA, the S3 Savage 3D. It was up there with the 3D effects of Voodoo Banshee, which itself was extremely competent in 2D. It was up there with the top of the market and it offered a bottom of the barrel price. But this was 1998 and not 1995. People weren't looking for 2D acceleration. They wanted 3D acceleration, and they wanted fast 3D. Why? 3D games were all the rage. And in 3D, eh, the Intel 740 wasn't great. It was definitely capable, especially in its price bracket, but it was not by any means a top-of-the-market performer. And whether or not that is based on its design, its use of AGP texturing, or whether it was just the fact that the core itself was perhaps underperformant, well, the Intel 740 overall was just not the best card. For the money, it was a good card. In a sense though, despite its lack of performance, the Intel 740 still delivered on image quality. Yeah, it wasn't the best, but it was excellent at what it did. And one of the things you'll see later in this video is this Intel 740 has excellent image quality and image fidelity. It truly was remarkable and compared to cards at the time like the Voodoo 1 and Voodoo 2, which had, well, subpar 2D quality, especially when compared to later, more highly integrated 2D, 3D solutions. Yeah, the Intel 740 was a sure winner in that aspect. Before we get to testing, I want to talk a little bit about the Intel 740 and AGP texturing. You might think that there's a bottleneck because AGP texturing was developed for use with PC66, 66 megahertz SD RAM. This is not exactly true. Here's a chart from Vintage3D.com, which I've linked in the description. Vintage3D's tests concluded that the card itself does not really scale. Above 133 MHz at CL3, yeah, the RAM doesn't really change performance much. And you'll see, because my figures are within spec. The fact is, I used a Pentium 4 at 2.8 GHz with a Universal AGP motherboard and 512 MB of DDR333 at CL2.5. Uh, the rest of the specs are in the description, they're not really relevant, but the fact is, even with the enhanced bandwidth and throughput of DDR and an extremely fast Pentium 4, of which this was not designed for, the card didn't really scale well. So yeah, let's play some games and put everything we've talked about to the test. Let's see how good the Intel 740 is or isn't. First up, let's run the time demo from Unreal Gold. What we're looking at here is just a standard loop in Direct3D from the Unreal intro. Yeah, you can already see right now that the FPS are somewhere between 13 and 30 with an average in between 22 and 24. Not precisely great, but not unplayable. And that's the fact. The Intel 740 is delivering adequate performance, but no more. But benchmarks aren't everything. Let's play some Unreal and see how it looks. On a quick note, You'll notice that the gamma and exposure and brightness are extremely high on this footage. The Intel 740 provides a very bright image, so I have also included, which I will be showing side by side, a gamma corrected image that looks substantially better.
You have entered a restricted area. Next up, let's talk Quake 3 Arena. Here's the settings that I used for the game. And yeah, let's run a couple time demos and play some Quake 3. Twenty-five point three FPS, not too bad. And on time demo two, I ended up with twenty-five point five FPS. So we were within range there. And now for some gameplay. You have taken the lead. Uh, uh, uh. 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 Next up, we have quite possibly one of my most favorite games of all time, Half-Life 1. Now, for Half-Life 1, I'm going to do something a little different and run the game side by side in Direct 3D and OpenGL so you can see the card's difference in performance. I noticed that the card was significantly more performant in OpenGL and I'm not sure why. I was using the latest drivers on the card, but you know, it might have been something driver related. 
I have a suspicion that it probably was. On another note too, I'm going to show the tram as well as some just walking around footage in the first level. This train is inbound from level three dormitories to sector C test labs and control facilities. If your intended destination is a high security area beyond sector C, you will need to return to the central transit hub in area nine and board a high security train. If you have not yet submitted your identity to the retinal clearance system, you must report to Black Mesa personnel for processing before you will be permitted into the high security branch of the transit system. Due to the high toxicity of material routinely handled in the Black Mesa compound, no smoking, eating, or drinking are permitted within the Black Mesa transit system. Please keep your limbs inside the train at all times. Do not attempt to open the doors until the train has come to a complete halt at the station platform. In the event of an emergency, passengers are to remain seated and await further instruction. If it is necessary to exit the train, disabled personnel should be evacuated first. Please stay away from electrified rails and proceed to an emergency station until assistance arrives. Mesa Hazard Course Decathlon will commence this evening at 1900 hours in the Level 3 facility. The semi-finals for high speed numbers and will be announced in a separate secure access transmission. Remember, more lives than your own may depend on your fitness. Do you have a friend or relative who would make a valuable addition to the Black Mesa team? Immediate openings are available in the areas of materials handling and low clearance security. Please contact Black Mesa personnel for further information. If you have an associate with a bad in the areas of medical business, biotechnology, or other high tech disciplines, please contact our civilian recruitment. The Black Mesa Research Facility is an opportunity. A reminder to all Black Mesa personnel, regular radiation and biohazard screenings are a requirement of continued employment in the Black Mesa Research Facility. Missing a scheduled urinalysis or radiation checkup is grounds for immediate termination. If you feel you have been exposed to radioactive or other hazardous materials in the course of your duties, contact your radiation safety officer immediately. Work safe. Work smart. Your future depends on it. Now arriving at Sector C test labs and control facilities. To a certain extent, you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. In the direct 3D footage at the left, you can really see some serious rubber banding going on, and I'm not sure what caused it. I tried everything to solve the issue, but nothing worked. At this point, I'm seriously convinced it was driver related. Ah, hello, Gordon Freeman. It's good to see you. 
And now for another perennial favorite, Unreal Tournament 99. Now if you notice, it says right there not to use Direct3D with the Intel 740. Well, we're doing it anyway. This is a 3D accelerator and I want 3D acceleration. As has been the paradigm of this video, we're going to do the time demo and then transition into some gameplay. In an attempt to control violence among deep space miners, the new Earth government legalized... Realistically, the results we're seeing here are pretty respectable. We're somewhere between eh, 30 and 40 FPS with some dips into the mid-20s. But overall, the card is pretty acceptable in terms of performance. And when you consider that the Intel 740 was basically a budget option, this is actually quite acceptable. Especially when you call back to the fact that there was literally a note saying not to run this game in hardware accelerated mode. And yet here we are running it in hardware accelerated mode. Now, one thing that's really important to mention and is very, very interesting is if you've ever played this game in Glide, you're probably thinking, wow, this image looks amazing. And that was my first thought, because I normally use a Voodoo 3 3000 for this. But you know what? I gotta hand it to the Intel 740. As for image quality, the card looks fantastic. Are legendary. The time has come to prove you are the best. To crush your enemies. To win the tournament. Next up, capture the flag on Facing Worlds. One of the things that really stands out throughout this match is just how excellent the Intel 740's image quality is and how it's not great at certain textures. But that aside, the card itself looks really nice. I did notice some graphical errors, but overall, the image quality itself is crisp, clear, and the colors are vibrant. I mean, this is just fantastic and quite playable. And for a, again, low budget entry market card, this is awesome. But for Intel's latest, greatest, and most advanced card there was, eh, this is a little subpar. But it's still fun, it's still Unreal Tournament, and I still hope that you enjoy this gameplay. Alright, so let's bring it around and show some gameplay of the famous game Shogo, which is just awesome and one of my favorites. But yeah, aside from what I'm showing right here, which is basically the fact that the game recommends lower medium and there's certain texturing things to look out for in the settings, which I'm demonstrating. Um, yeah, you know, this is where I kind of want to take a step back and talk about the Intel 740 as a product. So by now you're probably thinking, hey, Will, What's so bad about this card? It ran all these games pretty well. You're right. It is not a bad card. It was never a bad card. To all the reviews that basically say the Intel 740 was Intel's greatest failure or something like that. No, no, no. I suggest that's the Willamette Celeron at 1.7 gigahertz or thereabout. Um, yeah. Check one of those out. Do not recommend. Not a fun time. But jokes aside, in all seriousness... This is an awesome card for what it was. It's really unique, and as Intel's last foray into the desktop GPU market, it's super interesting. It's stable, it has excellent image quality, and it laid the groundwork for Intel's integrated graphics later on. In fact, the Intel 810 and 815 chipsets, yeah, they use the Intel i752 graphics accelerator, which was the upgraded version of the Intel 740. So what more is there to say? Well, not much, but you know, overall the Intel 740 is a compelling product 
as one of the first really successful AGP cards that basically popularized the standard, it's legendary. For its performance, it is not legendary. For its image quality though, eh, yeah, it's pretty good. But no, jokes aside, it's an awesome card. It's a really interesting piece of history, and I'm really glad that I got to explore it with you all for the intro of GPU June. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a fantastic June. Thanks again, everyone. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe as there'll be plenty more coming for GPU June.